Hello. Welcome to the Logan County Genealogical Historical Society. My name is Bill Donut, and I'm the president of the, the society. And I'm here to introduce you to a new venture that the uh, society has decided to uh, follow. And that is to provide videos on Facebook and YouTube. Now these videos will include our monthly programs that uh, occur on Thursday evenings. Uh, the sec third Thursday of the month we have a, a program and the public is invited so uh, make yourself uh, welcome when you when you come to one of those. And uh, But they'll be delayed of course, we'll have to uh, work with them, they, they, we'll, we'll do that. And uh, so those are on the third Monday at 6.30 p.m. We will provide videos of uh, what happens behind the scenes. What, you know, what does it take to run this place and to uh, make the things you see behind me available to the, to the researchers who come in. And we will, uh, all the uh, videos will be informative, but some of them will have a, a hint of do-it-yourself uh, type where we show you how we do things and the reason for that is uh, we know we're not going to be doing this forever and we want the people who follow us to know what it is we did and how we did it so that they can take up the uh, challenge uh, at, a, at a later date. Um, to get ready for this I've been watching a lot of YouTube especially during the COVID shutdowns and the isolation period and I picked up on five that I watch regularly. Uh, the first is Aqua Chigger. And Aqua Chigger is based in West Virginia. And he does his metal detecting on land and in the rivers uh, of West Virginia, wherever he can go to find Civil War relics. That's his theme. And he has done a wonderful job. He's got a collection that's uh, admirable. Uh, get to see the the videos he's done of his uh, basement museum, uh, you will understand what I'm saying there. Um, Green Mountain Metal Detecting is one I've recently come across, and these now are not only uh, informative for, and this guy goes up into the mountains of Vermont, and he finds uh, colonial sites, and early American sites, and looks for the um, artifacts that are left behind and it gets coins that are dated uh, early 1700s and uh, from that point on. So that's uh, it's a really good, and I like his videos because they have an artistic part. Uh, he does a lot of uh, scenery uh, in his videos and he does a really good job of putting that together. Um, another one I watch from time to time is Adventure Archaeology, which is based in Alabama. And this is a group of fellows who, and their wives who go out and dig in dumps for bottles and walk creeks for bottles. And they collect the bottles, they trade the bottles, they sell the bottles, they repurpose the bottles. But it's quite interesting to see how they go about doing the work and the fun they have while they're doing it. Uh, Agate Dad is a new one I, I picked up, and he's a rock hound up in uh, Minnesota and lives not too far from Lake, uh, Lake Superior, and he uh, does a lot of rock hounding on the shores of Lake Superior and the surrounding rivers. So it's, uh, and he's got all the equipment to cut these stones, and you wouldn't believe the beautiful things that are inside the stones uh, that look like just any lump of stone that we would find around here. Um, the fifth one I watch is uh, Country View Acres. And that's based in Illinois. It's a South Central Illinois. But it's a couple who has taken over a farmstead and their adventures of trying to make it a profitable, profitable thing so they can retire to that, that piece of ground. Um, what I like about all five of these is that they show you the times when things don't go right, when mistakes are made or there's errors made, and they uh, uh, give a more realistic view of how these ventures happen. Uh, they don't just look at the good stuff, they uh, 
they do do it all. But we have our adventures too, and we're going to be uh, filming some of those. Um, uh, we get dirty sometimes. I've got some projects in the back back here that I will uh, uh, have you watch while I'm uh, working on them to make them ready for putting in the other collections, whatever whatever's inside them. And I'll explain that more when we get to that video. The, uh, <clears throat> I will, or we will, will uh, accept uh, constructive criticisms and, and suggestions. We're going to need a lot, of, a lot of that so that um, we can improve our, our videos. But be patient. This old dog has a lot of new tricks to learn. But fortunately, I've got a grandson who has technology skills, and he's been helping me a lot getting this thing started. A um, little bit about the Logan County Genealogical Historical Society it, itself. Uh, we have a nine-member board um, that carries out the mission of the society. And our mission is to find, preserve, and make available all the history and genealogy information we can get uh, to the researchers who come into the building. Um, the nine-member board is made up of the, the five uh, officers. I'm president. Diane Osborne is the uh, current vice president, and along and she's former president as well. And uh, goes what goes along with the uh, vice president is that she's the program chair, so she gets the programs together that we have uh, that third Thursday at 6:30 every month, and uh, she does uh, some of our fundraising. She manages the uh, garage sale for us every year and she um, is our librarian. She puts the books in, there, uh, in, the, in the shelves where they belong once they've been processed in. Our treasurer is Diane Farmer, who is another former president, and she uh, has taken over the, the uh, financial aspect of this, which she uh, is trained for and likes to do. Uh, recording secretary is Brenda Jones, and Brenda is an original member of the society. She was back here back in 78 and 79 when it was formed. Uh, corresponding secretary is Mary Ellen Martin. Uh, our board member, or our at-large members on the board are Kirk Dobahall, a former teacher, Rogene Logan, a, a former um, uh, nurse and she does our intake work when things are donated to us. Uh, Joanne Marlin, uh, many people remember Joanne from the Logan County uh, Board, uh, the secretary for them, and uh, she's been our corresponding secretary in the past. And we have Roseanne Coors, who is a former treasurer for the society, and Roseanne played a very important part uh, in this past year when we were recovering from the smoke damage from the fire next door, uh, she headed up uh, the work crew that put everything back where it was supposed to be. So, uh, and, and did the final cleaning uh, of everything here. So uh, those, those folks did good work and they, they worked a lot of hours. Uh, the executive board meetings are on the second Monday of every month and they uh, are at four four o'clock in the afternoon. Our normal working hours are um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from uh, 10 a.m. or excuse me, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Or <laughs> I'll get that right yet. Uh, from uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then uh, uh, on the second and fourth Saturdays, we're open from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We are a 501c3 uh, charitable organization, so we um, any donations that are made, financial donations that are made, are, are tax deductible. Uh, the annual dues for the membership are twenty dollars, and with that membership, you get uh, four quarterlies, uh, the roots and branches, the title of it, and it comes out on January first, uh, June first, excuse me, April first. Uh, July 1st and October 1st. And the uh, members also get access to the research portion of the uh, 
uh, website. We have a nice large website that has a lot of information, but the research section is limited to memberships. A couple of uh, cautions. One is that um, having a pair of sunglasses next to your uh, uh, computer would um, be beneficial when the lights are shining, probably like they are right now, off of my head. Uh, I can remember being uh, uh, school <laughs> school administrator and having uh, an, uh, an assembly or something to a uh, kid would come up and ask, well, Mr. Donath, is it really true that you polish your head every morning? And I would laugh and have let them have their joke. Um, uh, another one is that uh, I'm a novice, so you're going to see errors in these early videos, and maybe all through them, I don't know. But uh, if I'm doing some, and you'll see it here in a few minutes, um, when I'm panning right, and I say I'm panning right, yet the camera goes left, yeah, <laughs> that's an error. Uh, we'll, we'll get better at it as we go. So uh, I'll let you go to your tour. You uh, have a good time on the tour, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, we've just set up for this evening's meeting. So I thought I'd do a little tour video. Uh, what you see is the front of the building. It has some collections up here. The one on the, on the far left of these three bookcases is our military section, including Civil War, World War I, and scatterings of World War II information. The, uh, on the right side are other collections, including churches and uh, books that Logan County Ites have uh, have written. If we swing around here to the right side, so now we're facing south, and the big cabinet here is our display cabinet for the military paraphernalia or memorabilia we have. We have a seating section here in front of the uh, fireplace. We have uh, our main main table with the speaker stand out the other end, and we have display cases on the right side over here with our items for sale and items to be seen and enjoyed. And then back over here, where I was just standing, is our main desk for the folks coming in to stop and ask questions. We also have a bookcases inside the door with books for sale. We've got uh, county uh, yearbooks for the high schools and the Lincoln and, uh, directories for all for many years here. Not all of them. Oops. And then we walk over here and we can see that we have shelving up here to display items as we identify those that need to go back after our uh, restoration work. Uh, the books in the cabinet, in the bookcases are uh, all history and genealogy books for Logan County. This section here is other states and other counties. Some um, Logan County items are Times I See and um, Route 66 books here we have the Lincoln directories, and down below that, on the bottom shelf, we have bottom two shelves. We have our quarterly. Then we move into the towns from Logan County and Lincoln. So we have have those. We have three bookcases here, starting with these that have the multicolored binders. We like white binders, so these multicolored color binders are donated to us by other, by people from the county who want their families to be noted. So we have uh, many family names here. Then we move on down and we have 
uh, binders of obituaries and weddings. We have more obituaries, more obituaries, and we get down here to these final bookcases. The one at the top you see is labeled cemeteries. So we have books in all of our cemeteries that uh, I don't know if, if they're current. Uh, many of them will be in the future. But the um, Decatur Society made up many of those by coming over long before Logan County Genealogical and Historical Society started and uh, walked the cemeteries and recorded the stone inscriptions. Below that we have birth records. Then uh, we have high school yearbooks from throughout the county. We have Lincoln College in there as well and uh, other institutions. The uh, large corner here is our schools area. We have a lot of school, Logan County school information and as you can see on the top of the cabinet here we have our Days Gone By book displayed and it's about the one room schools in Logan County. If I turn around without making you dizzy here We'll take a look at, well, we have this cabinet here. It's a dental cabinet that belonged to Dr. Uh, Doolin and was donated by a family member. And here, in this little room off to the side, we have the A. Lincoln Collection made for, uh, for the life of Abraham Lincoln. And we also have the Orendorf prints here to show important instances in Logan County's history. If we go into the room, we will flip on some lights for you. And we have a collection of books that have been donated, all on Abraham Lincoln and various portions of his life and his character traits. And we have some uh, busts portraits, more books. We have um, a lot of china that has Lincoln's image on it. Much of it made right here in Lincoln. And back here we have more information. The binders at the bottom are articles that have been collected and put into those binders so that we have just about everything about Lincoln in some form in here. And we have our pictures, portraits of Lincoln. If we go back here to towards the back of the building, we have what we call our workroom. And our workroom consists of a work table the big structure you see sitting at the end of the table is a replica of Rankin's Mill, which sat south of Lincoln on um, Salt Creek. We have a bank of filing cabinets over here. Some have to do with society business. Others have um, the vertical file. So from as far as you can see down there by that ladder to up here to the um, black filing cabinet are what we call the vertical file. And they are file folders that contain information about families in Logan County. So if I open one of these, you can see that we have file folders in there. Each of the tabs has a family name on it. Anything that comes in loose uh, goes into these files. And one of the projects we're doing right now is uh, getting these squared away. You can see we've put some new files in and we're going to try to uh, index them 
uh, I digitize them, get them in order. So right now we're working on uh, getting these alphabetized in the file and then making an index for each file. Above uh, <laughs> my clutter, this is my clutter from that brown box on the left there to the two paper boxes down there on the end. Uh, my responsibility to try to go through to see what's in them and what <clears throat> what needs to go in the vertical file or some other collection in the building. Up here we have uh, the three acid-free paper boxes you see there, or storage boxes, and these gray uh, boxes, newspaper boxes with the labels on them, are um, what we've been calling the shoe collection. You may have heard of the shoe collection. I've talk, <clears throat> talked to it about it on uh, Bill, Bill Gossett and uh, Judy Busby have had me on several times and we've talked about this collection. This came out of the MKS jewelry store and we are we took five years to clean, press, index, and digitize all of these newspapers. So the gray boxes contain the newspapers. What's in these three boxes here are things that uh, the Lincoln Herald print shop worked on. Different kinds of advertising, uh, invitations to weddings and funeral cards, uh, things of that sort, and that has to be organized yet and, I, and digitized, not digitized, but uh, indexed so that we know what we have and where it is. Um, let's see what else. Here we've got storage in the back for our, uh, our and extra binders back here to replace ones that were damaged during the reconstruction. Um, we have our mailboxes on top of those old file cabinets that came from uh, LDC. Um, by the way, these big tables all came from LDC as well. The intake person's uh, desk there, you see we have things donated to us all the time and um, we have to decide what collection they belong in, get them there and make sure that uh, they're identifiable. Uh, our work computer back here for society members to work with or work for society workers to work with and our big master uh, duplicator for producing our roots and branches uh, quarterly. If we go back up front, there's a spot that I skipped up here. And we have here our microfilm area. The cabinet is, has a lot of microfilm in it. Newspapers up to uh, the 1920s from uh, as early as 1859. Um, we have a nice HO train collection that was donated to us. Since uh, trains were so important to the history of Logan County and the towns in Logan County that we uh, decided we needed that. We could use some uh, steam engines. These are all diesel. Okay, over here we have a research computer for uh, members who come in and want to research. Uh, we keep the same things on this that are on the website that are accessible by members as well. So they don't have to travel to us. They could do it online. Uh, and we're putting more and more stuff on that each year. And a little duplicating corner here in case people want uh, copies of the of anything that they're looking at. Okay, uh, that pretty much covers it briefly. Uh, when we do more videos, we will 
look more closely at the various collections that we have and make sure that you know what's here and what we're doing with it and what work it takes by the volunteers to get these collections in order and keep them accessible to our clientele. Well, thank you for visiting with us. We'll talk to you again.